Hi, my name is Heather Ginsberg. I'm with the San Antonio Water System Conservation Department. We are so lucky to be here today with Lee Marlowe from the San Antonio River Authority. We are here to talk about rain gardens. And what better day to talk about rain gardens than a day like today? Lee is with the San Antonio River Authority. She specializes in low impact development, water quality issues. She's a native plant expert in this city. And again, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Thanks for uh, coming out to our rain gardens on a fabulous rainy day. Can you tell us a little bit about what a rain garden is? What is a rain garden? A rain garden is a depression that captures stormwater runoff. When it rains, that, that water that starts moving from your rooftops and driving uh, driveways, parking lots, things like that, it captures that water lets it slows that water down lets it sink into the ground and it mimics natural processes rather than letting it go right into the street and into the storm drain and right into our san antonio river or the nearest creek or stream can you tell us a little bit about what prompted this project why did you decide to to build this rain garden here that's a great question um, before we had these gardens in place this was your pretty standard uh, landscape it was turf grass and the water that would come off of our roof, 10,000 square feet of roof, would go right across that grass surface. And right below us here, we, we kept these uh, areas where the water used to go before the gardens. It would go very quickly onto our parking lot, right down into the nearby street, right into the storm drain, and right into the San Antonio River, which is just a few blocks away, untreated. Wow. And so now we capture uh, that water again from 10,000 square feet of our rooftop in these gardens and for the most part they stay here um, and the water gets treated by the plants and all of the organisms in the soil and uh, it gets cleaned and it, it moves through the ground in a more natural way. Wow. So we have a question. They want to know if it needs to be elevated because it's the opposite, right? <laughs> Right, that for, to capture that rain, you have to have a depression. And so ours are for, again, 10,000 square feet of rooftop. That's much more uh, rooftop than your, your uh, regular uh, residential setting. So ours are a little deeper than you might have at your home. But you do want a depression and you can have a six inch deep depression or 12 inches. We generally recommend no more than 12 inches deep. Ours are more uh, like two and a half, three feet deep. How long did it take to, to design this project before you, you put it into action? And how did you put this plan into action? Well, we all, so many of us for years, talked about how this area was just begging for rain gardens. We wanted it to happen. There just was a number of uh, staff who really wanted to make it happen. And so we just started talking about it. And once we decided to do it and we got support to do it, uh, it really didn't take long. We we have three downspouts along this side, so we decided to create three depressions, one for each of those downspouts, and then we came together and picked the plants. We really focused on using primarily native plants. We wanted to make sure that these were plants that most people uh, could buy at most nurseries around, and so we also looked at plants that had a wide a, a flowering time period so that they were attractive plants that most people would really like to see in their yards. I bet they attract wildlife too. What kind of wildlife do you see here? Oh, it's amazing. You know, it's, this is a great day to see the gardens in action because of the rain, but when it's not raining, if you come out here and you come look at the blooms of all of these plants, you will see thousands of pollinators, bees, Butterflies have been coming every day when it's not raining. Um, <laughs> we usually have a bird or two that's flitting in and out. We actually have a mockingbird nest in the tree on wow. the other side of our rain garden that the mama bird comes in and picks off insects and feeds them to her babies. That's There's babies amazing. in the nest right now. So it's really an amazing place to come in and see all of that action in addition to the attractiveness of the gardens and the plants themselves. Yes, uh, Lily, the fabulous Lily and Daniel are behind the camera today asking us our questions. We are from the San Antonio Water System uh, and uh, we are here with Lee Marlowe from the San Antonio River Authority. We do our garden scopes every Thursday. Actually, sometimes communication uh, scopes other awesome topics 
So we hope you'll join us every Thursday. We hope you'll share by swiping. We really hope you'll share and we really hope that you'll give us lots of hearts and ask us lots of questions. It keeps us going out here on this rainy day. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask Lee, uh, what role do trees play in a rain garden? We had a, an awesome tweet from the Alamo Forest Service this morning um, talking about the role of trees in rain gardens. Well, there's a variety of trees. You want to uh, be careful in your selection of any of the plants, including trees, but you want to make sure that you pick trees that can take the water. If you're, if you're going to put trees in the bottom of your rain garden, you want to make sure that they can take that water, that inundation of water. Uh, they, they definitely work around the edges of rain gardens, just like any type of landscape feature. And so there's a wide variety of native uh, small ornamental trees that work really well um, in our rain gardens. For example, we've got Mexican olive you can see behind us with the big white trumpet shaped flowers. We've got on the far end Mexican plum, which is a beautiful flowering tree, a small ornamental tree. It's one of the first uh, trees to bloom in the spring here. And so for the bees, it's fantastic. They will find it and then it gets pretty fruits on it that the birds love to eat. It smells so good. It does. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's a really good question. Lee, will the, will the native plants die when you have this kind of a rain that you picked here? That is a really great question. And because they asked about xeriscape in general, um, those plants are typically extremely drought tolerant and many of those types of plants will not be good at the bottom of your rain garden. So you have to select your plants um, very carefully for the different locations in your garden. The bottom of your rain garden, as you can see, those plants are underwater right now in this particular garden. So you have to choose plants that can take that condition. Um, many xeriscape plants can take excessive rain, but they're probably better suited on the upper edges. Um, the upper parts of the rain garden, the edges are generally more dry. And so in between on the slopes of your rain gardens, that's where you want something that's kind of intermediate. Um, why don't you talk about <laughs> horsetail reed, Lee? You're right. Well, and it, that, that's a good point. It's very aggressive spreader. Because it's a native, um, uh, I use the word aggressive for it, you but you're probably. right. It may not be the one that you want in, in your, your yard. Uh, just like we have frog fruit, which is a very aggressive spreader. Now, horsetail is an attractive native wetland type plant that uh, has a very upright stems, look like green straws. And so they, they go very well with very modern architecture. Um, they would be very good in the bottom of the rain gardens, but they do move very rapidly uh, and, and spread out. And so if that's something that you don't want for your garden, you might want to choose a different plant. We chose frog fruit. We love frog fruit. Love we promote frog. it. And in, really, this is one of the plants that um, when it's not raining, thousands of little bees and pollinators and butterflies are out here. It's just amazing, but it's a very aggressive spreader. Um, the cool thing about it being an aggressive spreader is you can come and break off some of these pieces that are coming onto the sidewalk, for example. This particular plant can root at the nodes, and so you can reuse it in other areas. It's a good one if you want to start small with a small rain garden, put it in, and then um, as it fills in, you can you can harvest pieces and then you can create another rain garden in your yard and use those to plant in that garden. I have a lot of these plants in my garden. Um, I use frog fruit as actually a lawn alternative and I've noticed that a lot of the plants that you chose for the rain garden um, also make really great low water landscape plants. Would, would you agree? Yes, definitely. And you know, it's funny, this particular frog fruit that is here was a weed in our turf grass before the construction of these gardens. Oh, our, staff, no. our staff found it, they dug it up, they potted it, and they kept it safe while we constructed the gardens. And then when they were built and we started planting, they brought them back in. Look so at it now. it's pretty amazing. Okay, another question about another plant, buttonbush? Oh. Buttonbush. Mm -hmm. That's a great native, um, uh, usually grows on stream banks. It's beautiful. It's got beautiful round flowers, white flowers. The pollinators go crazy over it. Um, it's fantastic. That one would be really great in the bottom or on the edges. Um, it can get, uh, it's more like a bush uh, shaped plant. And, uh, but you can, you can prune it up. It, it's fantastic. It really is. And Betty, you had a question about whether the rain garden retains water 
water after a rain event. Yeah, how long will this water stay here after the rain stop today, do you think, Lee? That's a great question. Uh, rain gardens are usually designed so that you want it to drain within 24 hours. You really don't want it to become a stagnant water situation. So um, these particular gardens are uh, will be empty once it stops raining within 24 hours, sometimes sooner. Um, but you, you don't want them to hold water for more than two days because then you start creating habitat for mosquitoes and things. The whole goal here is to slow that water down and let it sink into the ground and mimic natural processes better and, and result in, in cleaner water that reaches our, our streams and rivers. And then we had a question about the structure. So is there gravel or how, what is it that you put down to help the water drain in a timely manner? There are a variety of approaches. It really depends on your site. In our case, we just happen to have soils that allow that water to move through very quickly. So what you really wanna do anytime you're thinking about this is test your soils. You, uh, we've got some information on our website on, on how to do it very simply, but you wanna make sure that that water's gonna drain within 24 hours. If it doesn't, there are things that you can do. Uh, it takes a little more work, but you can add a gravel layer like you mentioned. There's other, other things you can do. Uh, in our case, the soils moved the water through very quickly, so we didn't have to, to, to do anything other than excavate them out and then plant them. I remember on your awesome videos that are on y'all's website, um, there's a, there was actually like a calculation involved when it came to the soils and stuff like that. So that's the first thing you do before you start. Right, so um, in in a residential setting, if you've got gutters, this is a, this is a pretty, um, good and, and very uh, common area where you have your downspout and generally that's a good location to consider because you've already got that water coming off your roof it's concentrated and you can capture it where the downspout is and so what you want to do is keep a rain garden at least 10 feet away from your home any other structure important structure like that and you test the soil first. Um, a really simple way is to dig a hole about 12 inches deep, fill it with water, um, and let that drain while it's still wet, refill it again, wow. and then watch how it drains. And if it drains after it's been wet that first time, um, within 24 hours, you are good to go. Okay. Make sure you call 811 before you dig. Call 811 <laughs> before you dig, folks. So, uh, for joining us on our garden scope today we do them every thursday at 10 30. you can find us on saws.org gardenstylesa.com sarah.org it's sarah s-a-r-a dash t-x dot org dot org mm -hmm. um and of course you can reach us uh, any of us on the saws facebook page they will always make sure that they get anything to us to answer your questions that they need to um thank you so much for joining us lee and thank you guys and have an awesome day be safe.